After years of dominating the compact electric car market, the Tesla Model 3 has come up on some interesting new competition lately in form of the Polestar 2 and the BMW i4, to name a few. So I thought it would be a good idea to look back on the original pioneer of this segment to see, does the Tesla Model 3 still hold the crown? For a car enthusiast like myself, electric cars were never really desirable because they never offered a truly competitive combination of performance and practicality. What with older electric cars like the Nissan Leaf having almost no power and a charge time of 13 hours just to go a range of around 100 miles. But thanks to the new owner of Twitter, Elon Musk, and his very big wallet, we now have a full lineup of electric cars that are actually now desirable. Performance like this and practicality of not having to pay for gas, plus all the impressive technology and autopilot system in contrast with regular old fashioned gasoline cars, you begin to wonder why people bother with the internal combustion engine in the first place. But before we get too carried away with that, let's look over the Model 3 and talk through some of its good points, some of its bad points, and hopefully this will be a thorough enough review for anyone who wonders how the Tesla Model 3 stacks up with its new competition. Let's have a tour around it first. Before I get started, I'd like to talk about this Model 3 in particular. This is the high performance performance model. It comes with 480 horsepower, which of course being electric, we all know this by now. Say it with me. Yes, 480 horsepower the instant you touch the throttle. It doesn't have to build up revs, blah, blah, blah. We've all heard this, we all know about it. And it also comes with dual motor, all wheel drive and around, hello and a full driving range of around 300 miles, which for me at least would be perfect for what I'd use the car for. But if you're planning on taking it on long road trips all the time, things can get a little dicey with supercharging, range anxiety, wait times, etc. But even then, you're still only paying around $15 depending on where you live for a supercharging station. Whereas a comparable internal combustion engine car would yes, take only about three minutes to fill up, but you're also spending 60, $70 with gas prices these days. So when you think about it sometimes, especially when you're standing there at the pump, it is hard to argue against a car like this. It does strangely blur the lines between car and tech gadget. There's a lot of interesting tech nerd stuff in there, toy box, all that stuff. This is a car that really appeals to tech nerds with all of its impressive features on the inside and outside and enthusiasts like me with how amazingly fast this thing is. So for this, my first actual car review, I thought I'd try to make a review that appeals to everybody. First, I'm gonna talk about what this car is like to live with every day, how practical it is, all the boring stuff. And then I'll show you guys some fun tech features that it has. And then I'll take it out on the road and drive it and tell you why it appeals to a performance enthusiast car nerd like myself. Firstly, we'll talk over practicality. Now, we'll start at the back with trunk numero uno, which weirdly isn't power operated, but do I care? No. You really need a power operated trunk? You really want one? But if you look inside, it's got actually a really good amount of storage for luggage and cheese and beer, whatever you want to put in here, bodies. But thanks to the car's electric power plant, there's also another trunk in this car, which is up front. Walking around the front end of the Model 3. Oh no, my car's broke down again. Let's just go see what's wrong. Oh goodness, somebody left a cooler in here. There's no engine. Of course, yes, it's electric, so you don't really need anything up here. It's just another trunk. Some electric cars have front trunks, some don't. It really depends on mechanical components and engineering and design, but this one does, and it's actually pretty big. I mean, 
you could fit a surprising amount of stuff in here. One interesting thing to note is that there is a button here to open the trunk. So if you're a very small person and you get kidnapped, it's okay because while you're on the highway on the way to the woods where you'll be killed and buried, you can press that button, open the trunk so the driver has no idea where he's going. But then you can hop out of a moving vehicle onto the highway and get run over and you basically just die anyways. Of course, this is a federal mandated thing. It's pretty cool to see under here. With that, we move on to rear seat space. If you open the door, you gotta push your thumb in like that. This comes out, and it's pretty easy. I don't know why I'm bothering to explain it to you guys, but you open the door and you find three back seats, which is always good for if you need it. And if I hop in, there's actually a good amount of room right here. I've got decent leg room, the driver's seat's in my driving position. I'm six foot three. And actually good headroom too, thanks to this huge glass panel that stretches all the way back. Folding down the center armrest, there's a couple cup holders, there's vents back here, which is cool. You don't always see something like that in a car like this. You've got pockets in the rear seats and it's really not bad. It's quite comfortable back here. But ladies and germs, what do we think of the front seat and driving position? Let's find out. Again, you get inside, there's plenty of room. It's easy to adjust stuff, but for comfort, I would really, really like a grab handle up here for the driver. So many cars skip out on the driver's grab handle because, oh, why would you need that? You need to have both your hands on the steering wheel. Come on. But the thing about this car is that it skips out on all the grab handles. There isn't a single grab handle in this interior. And why not? There's plenty of room. Maybe they needed to fit the curtain side airbag there. Just for the next Model 3, Elon, if you're watching, please give us grab handles. And while we're up here, let's touch on a slightly touchy Tesla subject, which is the quality. Tesla's quality in recent years, I've heard has gotten better, but it's been known to not be very good. If you look hard in this car, you can find little examples of lackluster interior quality and excessive wear for low mileage. It is a common complaint point that people have had with Teslas, so it's just worth mentioning for the time being. Let's move on to the tech nerd section and talk about this huge center screen up here. There's so many features to go through. It's really intuitive, easy to respond to my touch, really easy to understand. There's a camera recording screen, onboard dash cam, phone connectivity, Spotify applications you can get. You hit this toy box icon here. You can have the romance function, which is basically it's a fireplace inside your car. It'll show a fireplace on the screen and actually blow heat out of the vents, which is really cool. There's the sketch pad where you can draw messages. You can show yourself on Mars. There's Rainbow Road. You can make music back here. You can also play games on it while you're sitting parked. You can watch my YouTube videos on it. I mean, it is a really, really cool system. My complaint with it is that they fit literally everything in this car and in your life in this screen. The only things you can control from the wheel without touching the screen are the volume and I think the radio station, you can control the drive and the turn signals, but everything else, heated seats, the air conditioning, the lights, folding the mirrors, adjusting the steering wheel, turning on and off the headlights. I mean, there's so much that's jam packed into the center screen that I find it a bit annoying. They packed everything in the screen to give the interior design a simplistic look. And I'm sorry, but I just do not like the look of everything in front of me here, this whole dashboard is just hideous. It basically looks like they took an early, early prototype model of a car with no dashboard design at all, just a flat plane. And then they're like, let's stick a wheel and a screen on it. I mean, it's the laziest interior design I've ever seen. The steering wheel is ugly and strangely small. Yes, I know the events are hidden and all that stuff, but one thing I like about the BMW i4 is that you get in and it feels like a car because it's just a four series on the inside. But this whole interior, in my opinion, needs a full redesign. I like the look of the rest of the interior. It's just the dashboard and screen that I just absolutely can't stand. I think it's hideous. Overall though, complaining aside, I think this car offers a lot of 
impressive, hilarious, useful, convenient tech. There are lots of convenience features that this car has, like unlocking the car with your phone, or you can unlock it with this key card here, which you tap on the door right up here to lock and unlock the car. Really good idea because chances are you're driving, you're gonna have your wallet with your license in it. This is actually a really, really cool idea. I do wish it worked a little bit faster. It's a little bit delayed, which can be kind of annoying. Maybe I'm not holding it right. I've only had this car for a couple of days. Way better than having just a regular key in my mind. With that, I think it's time we take this car out on the road and talk to you about just how well it drives. Here we go, driving the Tesla Model 3 Performance. Before we get going, I have to tap my key card right here behind the cup holder. Which is a bit annoying. I have to pull it back out of my wallet sometimes, but you know, right. Call mounted shifter, which is not what you'd normally expect in a performance car, but it's very good for uh, pickup trucks and the like. Set my air conditioning off. 88 degrees, Florida. Yeah, I gotta save battery, right? It's back and drive, and goodness me, the car is moving, but I can't hear a thing. All I can hear is the sound of the that glorious Nissan Altima, which for some reason has bright pink wheels. That was disgusting. Driving by. The sound of the turn signal clicking and sweat running down my face. And we put the throttle down about halfway and launch into space. This car is so ridiculously quick to accelerate. It's almost unreal. Open it up. I'm a little bit nervous. So I'll straighten out the wheel. And it flies! <laughs> this thing is... Oh my god, this thing is so fast. Oh, this thing is just insane. argues that Teslas are awful and they're killing the enthusiast car and I, I get what they're saying you want a car with a more connected feel a manual transmission making sound and it's not you know like a mobile phone on wheels but you cannot argue with 0 to 60 in 2.9 seconds compared to gasoline it's pretty much free to fill it up it's just such an amazing package that this car comes in. I can forgive the hideous dashboard, the questionable quality. I can forgive all of that just because of how damn fast this thing is. When I'm accelerating, I can choose from various intensities of acceleration. I can do simple getting up to traffic. If I want to do a little bit firmer acceleration, I can do that. And if I want to just, Jesus. With all that weight down low, it corners surprisingly flat for being such a heavy car. This is easily f heavier than equivalent new BMW M3, for instance. It could handle better, but it, like I said, there's pretty much no body roll because of such a low center of gravity. I can, I can also change a lot of things about my driving experience. I can change the steering weight and the acceleration intensity all that stuff I can change. I can also turn on and off the creep function for the transmission, which it doesn't really have, but you guys get what I'm saying. I've never been in a car where I can choose whether I want it to creep or not. I've also got the classic electric car regenerative braking. I take my foot off the, I'd say gas pedal, but we'll say electric pedal. It slows to nearly a stop and it's also recharging the battery apparently as you do that, which is cool. It's what Tesla calls one pedal driving and it is pretty much mostly one pedal driving in regular traffic, but when you have to stop at a traffic light, you do actually have to stop. And that brings me on to another thing that I just thought of. I don't feel like driving anymore. I just don't want to drive anymore. So I pull this paddle down twice and it drives itself. It's not the most sophisticated autopilot car drive, self-driving 
available and I don't think it stops at red lights. I'm too nervous to actually give it a try. It's not my car, so I'm not going to. But here, we're coming up to a turn, a slight turn, and oh, it wants me to put force on the steering wheel. Not a capacitive touch steering wheel, so I have to kind of give the wheel some feedback to tell it that I'm still there and I'm not, you know, falling asleep. But it keeps you within the lanes, and if you're really tired, then you're just like, screw it, I don't have to drive. And the car doesn't have to either. Sometimes the car will just tell you, nah, I can't be bothered to drive. The autopilot is kind of hard to turn off. I guess you have to like, if you pull up on this paddle, it will turn off the steering function, but it'll still be in cruise control, which why would you want cruise control and want to steer at the same time? That doesn't make much sense to me. So to turn off the cruise control as well, you have to press the brake pedal, which is a little bit annoying. I don't really know how it works, but here we are. We're gonna try it out again one more time zero to 45 in like one second that is so addicting maybe i should probably never own an electric car because i'd get in so much trouble with it another thing it's not really uncomfortable either i mean it goes over bumps pretty pretty okay i mean my camera shakes is shaking a lot but that's just the camera i mean this car is actually quite comfortable again i think it's like something like a, around seventy thousand dollars which for all the performance you get and the features and stuff like that is really 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 impressive but i think that's gonna do it for me for this video i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope i gave you enough tesla information and enough clips of me making a stupid face while it accelerated you know like comment subscribe whatever you want to do and if you guys want to see more car reviews definitely let me know i'm gonna i will deliver it for you so thank you again so much for watching everybody have a good day